Today we'll look at how Riedel smart panels can be used for color correction or shading of cameras. Well, this is something that you usually would use an RCP for like this one or this one. We have a number of options from Skyhoy and I quickly want to show you where you can find our panel. So if you go to darkroom.skyhoy.com, you find beautiful pictures of all our products. So RCP Pro, for instance, is one of the most popular choices you can have for an RCP. So with this one, you have display, you have encoder knobs, and you also have this beautiful high class joystick, which is a component that has a display that shows you the iris of the lens of the camera you're controlling. That's really, really cool. So that one was the uh, RCP Mini, which is uh, this guy. It is uh, coming out in 24. So on this one, we also have that joystick featured. And then finally, you find this one, which is the Fader version, RCP V2 Fader, and we'll be using that a little bit today. But also now talking about real smart panels, you realize that actually Skahoy does have a number of rack units themselves. The thing is, smart panels are all over the place and they are beautiful, cool, great, and everything else. And they can do both intercom and also control panel stuff like what we're doing here. We have the control panel application on the Regal Smart Panels, which if you enable it, will allow it to interface with Reactor, which is the technology that we use to manage our panels. It can run, Reactor can run on a blue pill like this one, or it can run inside these panels natively. So almost all our devices sold today will have the power of what you see in this video. So don't think too much about that, but do consider that all this, and this is our vision, that is to bring all this together to invent the future of media production control, live production control, and so on. So for instance, the Rack Control Duo is one of the products from Skyhoy, which is really useful when it comes to shading because it has 12 encoder knobs on a Rack unit, a little bit like what we actually get from the smart panels, which also has these kind of combined rotary encoder knobs with lever keys. And the lever keys are set up so that it, it works like a, a four-way key or two-way key on a Skyhoy panel. So you press it down, you have the lower edge. If you um, lift it, you get the upper edge of the uh, key. All right. So inside of here, we want to add these panels. To, to have the two real smart panels connected, we already have running the X-Panel Regal Smart Panel application. It has been set up with the IP address of the panels and the port for the NMOS uh, node running on it. And that is true for both of these panels. So they are ready all um, set up in preparation of this video. So, uh, but they currently say waiting for Blue Pill and they are, ex um, they are announcing their port and that nothing is connected to it. So actually, we that will change as we are now selecting first the um, one rack unit panel, and now we'll just pick the two rack unit panel as well. So they are um, being announced on the network, and now they are found, and they also have some default configuration on them right now. Don't worry about that because we are going to change it over to generic camera control. That is the configuration we will be using today. So with a generic camera control, we're using two key blocks on each. And that means actually this one is underutilized. The uh, two rack unit version will only use half of the panel for this demonstration. The one part will be a camera selector. The second part will be all the settings. All right, let's try this out. So first thing we need is to add some devices. So for the one rack unit, we will search up devices on the network. Let's see what we find. Um, I would hope that we find a Canon camera because I have a Canon CIN100 next to me here. So that at least will be added. And maybe we'll, be, um, we'll also have some other cameras on the network. True. Let's see, much of this looks like not cameras. So um, let's just add some manually, which would be not online, but uh, just to fill in our camera selector with a few things. So let's take um, a few Panasonic cameras. I'm just holding down shift and, and pressing that. There's an Amira, there's um, Micro Studio 4K from Blackmagic Design. What else do we have here? We have maybe a um, what's Sony. There's got to be some Sony stuff in in here i know that we would have um uh, that was a lumix camera let's add one of the lumix cameras yes okay what about fr7 because that's an awesome sony camera okay so all these cameras are added they're missing ip addresses but the point is that they are added to the camera selector of the real smart panel now if we turn our attention over to the panel you can see that it has a home menu setting selected here if we hold down the shift key which is this lever key 
then we have the camera selector. So now I need to select between my cameras. Now I selected the uh, Panasonic UE70. Uh, I don't know why I added a Kumo router. That doesn't make sense. That was a mistake. The Aria mirror here, we have a studio camera over here. So let's say that I picked the Aria mirror. Obviously it's offline. Actually, maybe I can simulate it. So I can go in here, press simulate. Maybe that will actually allow me something that looks like parameter control. True, yes. It's kind of letting me simulate setting the values on the panel, as you can see. So um, now, basically, we have the Amira camera set. I hold down the shift key, and you can see we have the Amira set. And then if I release the shift key, we are now in the menu that will change what parameters we can set over here. Although they are being simulated, they, we are just you know playing with the potential setting of these values. Um, but basically, we have a menu of up to 10 pages of things we can change for this camera. Now, it would be more fun to go to one of the cameras where we actually can change stuff. So let's go back to the CRN 100. Oh, by the way, we have camera pages. We have seven cameras added. So if you want to access the Sony camera, we can also do that because it's on the second page. And now we are back onto this one, which is camera page one to six. So let's pick this one. This camera is actually a camera we can control. We are back to having the menu section here where we have the uh, home screen, we have exposure, we have color settings, we have details and so on. Before we start on this adventure, it's quite important that we are um, considering which mode the camera is currently in. Um, I think there might be, well, th this is the shooting mode that we need to observe. We are currently in scene shooting mode and I want us to change over to manual shooting mode. That would be the same as pressing this button, right? Because in manual mode, we are now able to adjust all these wonderful parameters. So we'll be doing that. We can now go to the color settings here. We have the white balance mode that I can change. So you see on this rotary encoder, I can change this. I think if I press the lever key, I'll also be cycling these over and over and over again. So there's like dual function here. We implemented both the lever key, which corresponds to pressing the lower edge of a four-way button on the Skyway panel, or you can use the encoder in between here. If you press and hold, I think it will reset the value. And the same would be true if you press and hold like that, it would also reset. Okay, we have a red and blue gain. We should be able to set those, but now we are in a, in basically manual mode. So there is one limitation here. You see that I'm changing red gain right now, but if you had a Skahoy controller and you pressed the encoder once, you would basically set it into course mode and see that the values are now changing by steps of, of 10. And that is something that on a Skahoy controller, you have a little indication that you switch between fine and course mode, which is very useful to doing small and large adjustments to a value. Unfortunately, the Regal Smart Panel cannot show you that. So there are some limitations to what we have been able to do in this integration. And that has to do with icons we put in the display in a normal situation. But it is really, really cool, isn't it? That we have all this camera control settings that are broken out on a smart panel like this and allows us to uh, adjust it here. So uh, could how would this look on a Skahoy panel? Actually, what we have done is implement what we call ProClass. And uh, ProClass means a camera control application using eight encoders. So I could actually do the same for this one. It is raw panel enabled and it has an IP address, but maybe we can just add it by searching it up. So I'll just add another panel to my reactor instance here. And this would be my RCP Pro V2. Yes, sorry, RCP V2. So this panel is now being connected to um, for us here. And then what I would basically do is to go in here from our device collection, pick the CRN um, 100 camera. And we already now see that we have the same settings in the display here. It would be much easier if we just look at this in the simulator. Oh, by the way, isn't that pretty cool? We have simulation tools for the Riedel Smart Panel. So inside of Reactor, you can actually follow along. So let me, let me just show you quickly. If I change the menu around, you see that we have a reflection inside of Reactor of the Riedel Smart Panels. That's really, really awesome, isn't it, guys? So, um, and of course, now in this case, I was curious to see if we just move down to our RCP, it would be easier to show you this uh, on this screen that, uh, and what was it? I think if we go into color mode, yes, 
Um, that was my intention. So you remember I told you that if I turn this encoder knob, we can go in fine steps like we do right now, but if I press it, there's this little indication. I know it's small, but there's this wavy line, and that wavy line means course mode. It means when I turn the encoder, it does it in steps of 10 in step, instead of steps of one. So I press it again and then I'm back to one step. So that was what some of the limitations of the smart panel for camera control. But anyway, what you have just seen is that we have applied the same technology that would go onto RCP controllers like this one. And that has been applied down onto a real smart panel. We have exactly the same for the dual version, uh, as I promised. Now we focused on the uh, single version up here, a single rec unit device. Um, but if I basically add a camera down here like the CRN100 then we have the same let's just go in here we select the camera we have a camera selector of only one camera right then we go back here we have the menu I can change around between the menu and up here you see these actually fun thing let's try to have the same camera both places we can go to first page home let's go back there um, let me see. go to the first page home we're now on the home page, we see the same settings. And of course, what you would expect is that as I turn the knob down here, you see changes to this value and the same is actually changing up there. Of course it does, because these two panels are talking to the same camera and should reflect the same settings, even though they could be miles apart. Thanks for watching this video. Please follow along, subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay tuned for much more content about Skyhawk controllers, radial panels and whatever else we can connect into our ecosystem.